Hello, and welcome to another time-lapse video. My name is Spicer McLeroy, and we are sculpting Batman this time. All right, so if you have, then um, you're my friend. If you haven't seen my other critique videos and all that stuff, uh, you should definitely take a look at that because I go into detail about this skull construction, about how to fix it. So make sure to go to my YouTube um, and s take a look at the speed sculpt critique videos and also the sculpt draw overs. And that way you can get a better sense of um, how, I'm all how I'm constructing all of this. But generally uh, what I do whenever I start is just um, is uh, just mark in everything, right? I don't need it to, at this point, to look like anyone in particular. I just need my, you know, my nose, my eyes, my eyelids, uh, my fat pads, my uh, facial muscles, and my um, zygomatic and my uh, temporal arch all like uh, dialed in. And then after that, you can really start uh, moving things around and then um, and adjusting things from there. But I definitely suggest putting eyeballs in as soon as possible and getting those eyes in. Um, just because, I don't know, for me, it just allows me to really just sculpt a little bit more comfortably. And um, we don't want to leave eyes for the last part of it. But uh, here, just knocking in um, muscle and fat uh, right there, the orbital furrow, uh, the depressor muscles, uh, the cupid's bow, and um, just adding in the neck, merging it down, and dynameshing it together. Uh, and then just doing the same, but uh, setting up the body as well. And again, not looking for any specific portions or anything I just want everything there you know like it doesn't even have to be perfect at this point you know um like I, I try to sketch as much as possible throughout the entire thing I, I try not to put any like um uh, what should we call it uh, pressure on myself that oh this wrinkle has to be perfect right now right here you know and we're still in the um planning stages we're still um feeling this face out and uh putting in those final details and and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, speed sculpting, if you haven't done it before, is very, very useful. Um, especially if you do it on a regular basis because your talent will catch up to your speed, right? And then if you're, if you can sculpt that quickly, then, you know, you can, you can get your workflows down quickly uh, because you're doing a speed sculpt every single day. You're starting a face every single day. And you're just getting that uh, that flow, and um, and it's really really useful. If you haven't done it, definitely do it, um, and you, you'll be surprised how quickly you can really um, get sculpting and get things done. But right there, I just masked it just to get a kind of like a preview of what the mask or the cow will look on his face, and just wanted to adjust a few things before I uh, actually committed it. And uh, using the mask lasso tool there, just to get a little bit more interesting edge at the edge of that, um, at the mouth opening for the cow. And uh, usually what I do after that is I, uh, after the extract, I do a group loops and then smooth everything out before unmasking, uh, just so all my edges are, are nice and crisp. And, uh, you know, Batman's got to listen. You know, he's got to hear, so we got to put an ear in there. Um... And then just coming through here and just um, reiterating all those um, all those face um, facial landmarks, and here just kind of pla uh, planing off the nose, um, so it can be pointy and visually interesting. And here I'm just um, adjusting the nose. It was just a little bit too wide um, for the um, for the nose uh, part of the cow to kind of fit around and look. Uh, look interesting and uh, I wanted to kind of age him a bit um, so if you're trying to age someone you definitely want to start putting some jowls in that'll automatically uh, add 10 years <laughs> to someone's face and then uh, also a bit more clear separation of fat in the face because the older you get the more separated your fat pads get and um, so if you really want to sell aging, that's probably the best way. Yeah. And here, just um, 
since he is older and stockier, because we're going for the um, <clears throat> Frank Miller, Dark Knight Returns, Batman on this one. We didn't really hit it, but um, but that's what I'm drawing for inspiration. And he's really, really wide and hefty. And this guy was looking very thin, and I wanted to get away from that. But, uh, but I use Tipo so that I can affect all this stuff at once. And you can see how much character it started bringing out. And um, at this point is where we can start putting in details and everything. You know, we got lips now. Now we got to make them, you know, um, like the comic book and all that stuff. So, you know, just if you can get your anatomy in, get your shapes in uh, and stick to the rules, then you can just use move brush and make it look like whatever you want after that. Okay. But um, but yeah, uh, here I was uh, putting that skin hangover on the eye. I thought it was looking good, but it kind of, in the end, just made him look like he was disinterested or like tired. So um, later on, you'll see that I, I change that and really go for like the Michael Keaton eyebrows from um, from the yeah, you know, uh, what was it, the '90s Batman, directed by uh, what you call it. Uh, Tim Burton and so um, so yeah I really like those eyebrows because they go really really high but it still sticks to uh, you know the orbital the um, superior lateral orbit it's still there you know like uh, we, don't, we don't just like pull those eyebrows up and get rid of all the um, all of the anatomy underneath you know it's, it's just to accentuate the um, the facial expression right it doesn't mean that we have to break anatomy rules afterwards right and here just trying to get the modialis where all the uh, muscles of the mouth uh, meet on the uh, on the lateral side of your um, of your mouth and really just uh, try to get that in I mess with it a, a few times so and here you can see I'm still have the uh, orbital arch right it's still there I didn't get rid of it or any of that I'm gonna reinforce it actually because it still looks Kind of boring to me but here i just knock in that orbital socket and then you can see the tarsal plate the upper tarsal plate there and um and just uh fiddle with this area for a bit but i i like i like the uh what came out of it i think it looks cooler and they're just reinforcing that the uh, zygomatic was the widest part of the face not the cranium but the face it was um the uh, malar eminence was getting lost so I had to um, reinforce that. And there we go. And so here I really, um, it's really quick to just add in some, some color details and stuff like that. It's not that, um, it doesn't take too long if you know what you're doing. Um, but generally what you want to do is you want to get your skin tone and then you want to uh, take the value down and a little bit more saturated for the lip color, and you usually can kind of find your way that way. But you can see that modialis is just standing out there, the, the little uh, forms on the side of his mouth. They're a little bit too pronounced, and they're not, um, they're not ending the way that they should. I believe I fix it later. But uh, here I'm trying to get this alpha to work for me, um, and no me gusta. I didn't like it at all, so... But there you go. There we go. Now we fixed it, right? So it's a little bit less prominent, a little bit less um, uh, distinct. And here, just adding some asymmetry. It always helps um, to add a little bit of that because you're... Uh, I mean, it is life, you know? Life is not symmetrical, especially with people. If you would see a truly symmetrical person, you would be like... Well, so that's the weirdest looking face I've ever seen, you know? So uh, we definitely don't want to keep that. Uh, we want to, you know, carry over that um, that sense of reality to our sculpting and uh, just get the move brush and, you know, turn off symmetry and move things around a bit. Just don't break the rules. Okay. And here I just use masking and extract uh, to get the uh, symbol. Um, most of the focus is going to be on the face, not the symbol. Uh, and I really want the emphasis to be there anyway. So... Um, so not really concerned with the edge work that's happening or that's going on with, um, with this bat symbol. And I also forgot the, uh, <laughs> the cape. Hopefully next time I do one of these, uh, we can get it.
But here, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to capture that exact blue color because it's really, really messing with me. So I just went into Photoshop, got the RGB values, uh, changed my picker to 5x5 five five so I can get an overall blue color, not a specific, uh, just not one pixel. And uh, it allowed us to get that color. So thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, check out the links below. And we will see you next time.